electrical is a mess, as we've already kind of established. Um, my vent fan, all this existing wiring, take a look at this. This is all connected to old knob and tube wiring. So when you see old wiring like this, separate wires that are kind of covered in cloth, that's all knob and tube. So this is all dead because I removed it from the rest of the house that was connected to this. So now we just got to remove this old VX cable and just disconnect all this stuff. But that's really a bad sign when you see uh, all of that connected like that. You don't want to leave anything like that. You want to run new lines up for your bathroom. So this is it. So that's what they did. That's what they did. They just added an outlet off the lighting circuit. So once you turn off the light, you turn off your outlet. Really, you shouldn't do that. It should be a dedicated outlet for this. Hair dryers take up a lot of power. So if you have your lighting circuit and everything connected to that, it's just not a good idea. And this is just a, a rat's nest here. So let's just get rid of all of this, boy. So they got, they canceled out an end here. I don't know what that's going on there. So that's hot. So one of the problems with this, these old wires, the cloth ones here, there's no ground. So that was definitely not safe to put an outlet off of something like this. You don't really see too much of this stuff anymore. So you can see, and this is cloth wire and there's no ground to it. So this is, uh, for the most part, we can go ahead and use this for the uh, lighting circuit, but there's no way you can be running an outlet off of that. This is definitely unsafe, especially when you're putting like high voltage hair dryers or something in there. <laughs> so nothing surprises me anymore with bathroom remodeling. Uh, you uncover some of the worst stuff out there uh, as far as electrical and plumbing for that matter. So it's a very complicated process. It's probably one of the most complicated areas of your home, uh, bathrooms. And that's really what my channel is all about. It's simplifying bathroom remodeling so that I can help you plan, learn, and build your dream bathroom. And I, I have a guest tonight that might look just like me, but uh, he is, uh, I've been a contractor, an electrical contractor for many years, has been a mentor of mine. Uh, he's my younger brother but he's definitely taught me most of everything I know about electrical. So if you have electrical questions, be sure to leave them in the chat during this. Give me a like on this video. It definitely helps you out, helps me out to get the, out to more people. But further ado, Bill, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, and I'm hoping uh, that you'll be able to, you know, explain a little bit more to people about some of the dangers of some of this old wiring. I mean, I know you've been here in Pittsburgh as well and doing an enormous amount of renovations and you probably see this stuff every day. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, I guess with, with bathrooms and you run into some of this old, old wiring, I guess <clears throat> some of the biggest things to worry about is making sure that the wiring is grounded. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you ran into a, a lot of different, it looked like it had a, a lot of different things going on there. Um, best thing to do is to, to shut it off and remove all of that uh, old wiring that's not con not connected to anything. Now, what you have to be careful about is if some of that wiring is connected to other wiring in the house and is feeding other parts of the house. Right. Uh, that's the one thing you want to you want to be careful of. It, so the best way to do that is to just kind of look at the wiring, see if it feeds somewhere else. Uh, if it's feeding somewhere else, then when you shut the breaker off, go around and test things, find out what's not working. Right. Uh, that's one of the easiest ways to do it. Right. Um, you know, before you get started, test everything around before you start working on the electrical, see if everything's working prior to messing with it and then shut it off, start to dismantle it. You see wires traveling other places, try to disconnect it in a safe way and then and check the circuitry. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of, I mean, I don't have the, the finished picture, but a lot of times you come in here and you see a new GFI, GFI outlet and you think that maybe yeah. something's updated and, and we're good to go and you tear out that wall and then, then you end up with this kind of major mess here. Um, and I mean, we're going to get into doing a, a basement bathroom with all the, the new wires in it and kind of the way that uh, basically uh, I configure it and, and hopefully I'm, I'm doing that correctly. But uh, 
you know, the biggest thing I probably see the most of is, is uh, having an outlet off of the lighting circuit, you know, I mean, cause that was yeah. just where the power was. I mean, a lot of these homes that I'm, we're working on here in Pittsburgh are built in the 1920s, 40s, 50s. And they just, um, you know, they really didn't have, you know, all the yeah. things that we have these days. And yeah, well, G GFI outlets weren't uh, weren't even a thing or even required until the early 90s. So a lot of these bathrooms were, uh, well, actually, I think it was the early 80s, but a lot of these bathrooms are, uh, are, are way older than that. Some of these are almost 100 years old. You wow. know, they just, uh, so they, they, they would just come off the, the easiest thing they can. So the light fixture is right there and you need an outlet in your bathroom. So rather than trying to get a circuit all the way up through there, they would just pop out of the light fixture and put in an outlet right there and you know that'll work for some purposes but the problem is is that what you use in the bathroom most of the time is a hair dryer and that's going to be the hardest on a on a circuit that's that's old and you know a, a circuit that has a lot of connections in it before it gets back to the panel yeah so something like this this was in a in a home uh, that i just recently sold last year uh and yeah that old nasty that's called bx cable right that the metal metal line yeah there. yeah that, that's a, that's a 1930s era wiring yeah it's yeah it's right after uh knob and tube yeah because this actual um home had originally like gas lighting i believe because they had gas lines in every mm -hmm. part of the home and then you saw all of the uh the knob and tube and then you started seeing this so um you know if this was which i'm almost positive this was powering the GFI in this existing bathroom as well, probably for the last, you know, as long as I owned the home and, you know, way, probably way before then. What, what are the major, I mean, is it the wattage of the actual, you know, hair dryer that, uh, what, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The, the wattage is a problem. Um, so we have going on there. Is you have a couple issues there. Uh, the GFI actually does solve some of the problems. If you have a circuit that doesn't have a ground on it and all you have is a hot and neutral, yeah. then you could put in a GFI outlet and that simulates a ground because the, the GFI outlet will measure between the, the neutral and the hot leads. And if there's any imbalance, meaning if something is leaking to ground, it will shut off. So technically a GFI is a simulated ground. So a GFI outlet's exactly what you want to install on old wiring like that if you don't intend on replacing the wiring. Uh, and okay. even if you do intend on replacing it, so you still install stuff a here, GFI outlet. If I did a GFI on here, I mean, as long as it's not connected to a whole bunch of other things in the home. Like right. You be... can you can that would be a way of at least making that outlet point safe. Now the thing is, is that it's not even really a conversation because when you open the walls, everything therefore has to be brought to code. Right. So when you see an air splice like that, an old BX cable, you can't bring that to code. So it has to be removed. Yeah. And, and then that's all you really can do. And and if, if the wire does go to another room and you don't want to rewire any further than that, you could put that into a junction box right at its nearest point of leaving that room and run a new wire to that point. Okay. So you could do that to keep the old wiring. That's a lot of work to keep old wiring. So, but sometimes replacing old wiring is even a lot more work than. Well, yeah, yeah. I've learned that the hard way, and uh, yeah. I remember you you warning me of that because I've come across not necessarily the knob and tube, but a lot of this BX cable, especially yeah. in old basements. And my goodness, you touch the stuff and it just disintegrates in the box. And then, mm -hmm. like most of the boxes that they would connect to were like little three-inch boxes. So they're packed in there. And then when you try to loosen it up, it all it kind of falls apart. And then you got short yep. circuits that are just, it's, it's honestly, I found that that to be even more dangerous than the, you know, even this kind of open splice in a way. Oh, it? It, it, it absolutely is. This, this was the very first version of what they would consider grounded wiring. So it technically is grounded, but you can see in your picture there, only the, the neutral and hot leads are connected. The ground as actually travels through the jacket of that wire. Right. And without the jacket in a box connected together, there is no grounding being transferred. So you don't have any grounding in that bathroom, which does make it kind of dangerous. And uh, a GFI outlet will at least make you safer in that situation. But uh, the best thing to do is like you did, just rip it all out, completely rewire it. Don't try to keep any of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, another common thing that I, I see, so if it's not the light fixture 
that is originally there that they take the they they pull the GFI on. It's the opposite where there might be an, a dedicated GFI and then somebody connects a lighting circuit off of that. Um, mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Is that um, uh, I'm fine with that as long as uh, as long as all the gauges are the same. <clears throat> if you're going to use uh, a 20, like so. All right, so a GFI outlet in your bathroom, if you're going to run a new circuit to it, it has to be a 20 amp rated circuit. That's a 12 gauge wire. So if you're going to run a 12 gauge wire to your outlet and you want to power your lights off of that, you're going to have to run 12 gauge to all of your lighting and your switches and, uh, and to your lights from there. Okay. So that's fine. You can do that. You can share the uh the lighting and everything just within that bathroom that lighting circuit on that gfi outlet circuit uh but you can't go to any other rooms at that point with that lighting circuit that's just for the bathroom because the gfi outlet circuit is specific to gfi outlets for bathrooms only and only bathrooms you can't share that circuit with a laundry outlet or anything else in the house it has to be it can be shared with another bathroom but nothing else but something labeled as a bathroom uh, okay. Ground fault circuit. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I mean, I uh, I've always just run a 15 amp for lighting, and then that's 20 what I would for, do. 20 amp for yep. GFI, but you could get yep. away with just running 120 amp up to yeah. do everything. Yeah. Yes. Um, yep. And then obviously, I mean, we're we're building a basement bathroom here. It's going to have heated flooring. I'm assuming heated always has to have its own dedicated mm -hmm. circuit. So yeah. Um, now there there is there is a um, Another issue that can arise with wiring your lighting uh, with that 20 amp circuit is that um, you're required to have combination arc fault circuits throughout your entire house, all living space area. I'm pretty sure, and, and it's kind of a gray area with inspectors. Some believe you need combination arc fault in the bathroom lighting, and others believe it's it's not required um, because in in the bathroom the the outlet doesn't have to have combination arc fault protection on it because that type of breaker will not run a hairdryer. So they don't require it in the bathroom. And that is the only room that has that exception. And the, as far as the lighting, I should probably look that up. I'm thinking it's possible you may have to use combination arc fault for the lighting. So you may not be able to use the GFI outlet circuit for that. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> you got the code yeah, book there, I'm sure. I got my code book. <laughs> these things. Well, while we're on the topic of GFIs, and I've know I, I know I've asked you this question before. You know, there's two different. Most the most home stores are going to sell you a, a 20 amp uh, GFI and a 15 amp GFI. So you, yeah. you, you want to run a 20 amp line wire 12 to your mm -hmm. dedicated GFI. And you've told me that I can use a 15 amp. GFI on it. Uh, why yeah. shouldn't that be 20 amp? It seems like to me 20 and 20 makes sense. Like why? Um, well, it, it really comes down to the rating of the appliance that you're actually using. I mean, if you ever actually look at the wattage and the power consumption of the appliance you're using, it's never going to exceed 15 amps. I mean, if you if you have a hair dryer that's pulling 20 amps, it's eventually going to kick a 20 amp breaker. So most of these appliances are actually rated lower than that. A lot of them are going to be around 11 amps, something in that in that area. And also for for 20 amps, that's um, it's more of a rugged uh, type of outlet. It'd be something that would be more for constant use. So if it's something that uh, where you're going to have like a lot of hair drying going on all day long, like say if it's for a hair salon, <laughs> yeah. oh, you would right. definitely want to use a 20 amp outlet for that. But for your bathroom. Yeah. The few little hits of 15 amp that it's going to get while you're drying your hair, it's not really necessary to go 20 amps. It's not going to hurt you to go 20 amps, but it's just not necessary to spend the extra money on it if you don't want to. Yeah, it is. It is somewhat significant. I mean, a good 15 bucks an extra. extra yeah, fifteen dollars more, and it's really not going to do you any different. Yeah. I mean, the regular 15 amp GFI outlet will last you just as long. It's get you know if there's any kind of malfunction where it fails, the, the 20 amp will have those same issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's just the one common thing I always get stumped on, and I know other people uh, question that as well. Uh, we'll get into some heated flooring questions here once I get into the, the uh, basement bathroom, but I wanted to uh, basically get into my course, which I have this basement bathroom outlined in, and go through some of the electrical that I've done here as far as the rough in and, and get your input on that and the methods that I went, went about it. But uh, just to plug my course, I basically have all of the current videos in this basement bathroom in my DIY geek collection. So I have six courses right now available that step you through the entire process of bathroom remodeling. 
but the DIY Geek membership will get all of them, including this course that we're gonna go through that uh, basically once this is done, I'll have seven courses. So, you know, over time, this DIY membership will have, continue to grow value because every course that I have from here on out will be put into it. So over time, it becomes a better value. Um, but yeah, let's get into my course so I can highlight uh, some of the, uh, what I've done to this far. This first video is about five, six minutes, Bill. So, um, you know, this is gonna be somewhat of a reaction video. So, you know, shake your head if you find something <laughs> incorrect on it. Um, but, but so far, I basically go through the entire process of what I've gotten done so far. Uh, you know, location and layout, planning out where your bathroom is gonna be, removing the concrete, the rough in plumbing, uh, which is definitely can be a complex situation. Uh, depending on the scenario. So every situation is a little bit different, but that's where I have my other courses that I kind of link over to for different situations. Uh, but yeah, adding a basement bathroom is definitely high level into plumbing. Uh, we get into the concrete floor, the framing that I've already basically have mostly done here and then heated flooring, which we've already kind of gone over. If you've seen some of my other videos on that as well. Um, the mud bed shower pan, we're doing a curbless shower in this system. so. Uh, that was definitely going to make it feel a little bit more roomy in here. And then now getting into the actual electrical. Uh, so the rough in electrical, oh, I'm signed in, I'm going to sign as a, um, a student. I need to look. Yeah, there we go. All right. So I'm going to minimize you a little bit here so that they can watch this video. Uh, but yeah, really, I mean, it's really kind of a treat doing a basement bathroom because I'm not dealing with any of that old stuff that's existing. Uh, you know, you kind of, I kind of was able to highlight or know exactly what I was getting, somewhat getting into. Later on in this, this story here, you'll see uh, some of the things I did not pay attention to as far as the service goes. But um, yeah, but I at least knew what I was in for when it comes to actually doing uh, the, the wiring because it's all going to be new for the most part. So let me watch, let's watch this. I'm going to uh, go over the comments here too. So Facebook, YouTube. We're uh, live streaming both at the same time. I'm going to go over some while, while we're watching this and, uh, you know, maybe I can uh, ask Bill some of your questions here. Okay. All right. So we got a cold air return. So I got to kind of create a, an angle hole for my wires here. So we've got a 15 amp line. This is going to be for our vent fan and our lighting. So one can do all of that. So these Diablo blades are pretty awesome. It's kind of like a, they call it a demon bit, but it's like a spade bit, kind of like on steroids. So if you hit a nail or anything like that, it's not going to, I mean, it shouldn't dull out right away, but it really makes it easy to, to cut through. Oh, you probably can't hear that, huh, Bill? Sorry. I cannot hear that now. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, okay. So this is a all 20 right. amp line. I wasn't sure two. if I was supposed to hear it or not. So this is going to go to my outlet. Those are my favorite drill bits. All I use those all the time. Really should be dedicated. So you want to we go a, through a lot of them because you tend to dull them, but they're fast. Oh, that's really? really yeah, the no, first time I've seen them, they're, they definitely work pretty well if, if your battery is well powered. Yeah, that particular type, yeah. So I mean, we usually we use the, just the spade now, This is bit dedicated all the way to the panel. Is a good one and this to is use. for our heated wiring or our heated flooring. So that's for the floor. That's for the heated floor. So you always floor. need a dedicated yep, that's a circuit good way to for do that. anything heated. Just to have the so conduit stubbed down using the metal box is the best thing with to a heat use. Element, that's going to be dedicated. You can bend that to a, like a heated custom flooring. arc that will just dedicated. fit nicely. And to get right like I said, we're going to be having a dedicated circuit for the GFI as well. Sometimes it takes a lot of additional feeds to, to feed a bathroom. But it's in this a lot instance, extra wire we just there. have one 15 amp <laughs> and two 20 amp lines for this bathroom. I don't want to be too short though. No, I've, I've learned that the hard so way. Let's just adjust this to the bottom of that yep. box. Okay, so there's multiple sizes. Yeah, there's boxes metal boxes. You can get a staple switches, all the way as far as 12 inches away, box. eight inches and on the plastic. Most of the time, I like to go with the bigger ones just because if you decide you put a dim switch in or anything that's going to, um, you know, I'm actually going to be putting in a 
a Wi Fi controlled glass are pretty good. They're nice and rigid. switch on this. And a lot of them have some pretty bulky back ends of the switches. So having a deeper box like this really helps out. So you can see the difference here of the box. So this is a 44 cubic inch box, and this is a 56, I believe. It says it in the back of the box. Yeah, 56.5. So this is going to give me a lot more volume, especially since I'm going to have three switches and I'm going to have wires to each individual light fixture. And having a bigger box really makes it nice. But these fiberglass ones, this is fiberglass, this is plastic. Fiberglass is obviously a little bit more stiff. You know, this is a little bit more flexible. But either one works. It's just a matter of what kind of switches you're putting in. If you're just going to use regular, normal toggle switches, this would probably be completely sufficient uh, for the amount of wires you're going to be putting in there. So we'll just line this up with our laser okay so that's going right here to i like this box because they're laser. nice and rich the bottom of here so this matches but, uh, up don't mess with your and you just want to make sure that these tabs are sticking outside of the finished wall because we'll have half inch drywall and that will um, be the right depth for it Make sure nice you thing give is yourself if you a little have extra to pull that box here. out, you can just kind of and break I it. I indicate my power supply. I just, I just make it all black so that when I'm configuring things, I know what is what here. Okay, and we'll staple this once we get more wires in there, but this is my power lead to everything. All right, so for this one, I'm going to get my vanity out because this is such a tight space, and we're going to be doing a little bit of a unique faucet with a marble backsplash so this is going to be a little bit unique and i don't want to have my outlet where it's going to interfere with my faucet and make things difficult later on so basically let's try to figure out exactly where we are going to be placing this so our shower is obviously right at that break there that's 35 inches the thing i want to pay attention to is the distance between the center of my toilet and my vanity it should be a minimum of 15 inches and I think we're just going to go 16 and a half because that'll leave me a good six inches on the other side of this for my shower doors uh, but I didn't want this crowding too close to my shower doors either I wanted to have a little bit of space there just to make it feel um, you know not so crowded to the shower so this is basically roughly we're going to be located so as far as outlets go same thing they make bigger boxes uh, especially for a gfi outlet box you definitely want to get a bigger box this one is this is a 22 cubic inch box the smaller ones are going to be 18. so if you're going to use a gfi outlet definitely recommend the bigger box now on a normal situation you would just set this at 42 inches off of your finished floor and that typically works in most situations to be above a normal backsplash and your where wherever uh, your vanity is going to be and a lot of times you can place this anywhere within the vanity area now in this particular situation i didn't uh, we're going to have that backsplash up so i don't want it to be anywhere within the vanity area i'm going to stick it outside and i think i'm going to actually leave it down below my vanity so that you're not like looking at the outlet kind of floating around in an odd space and a lot of times i really do kind of like having the outlet just even with my vanity because then you can plug everything in and all your cords hang down along the side if you're going to leave them there so it's not bad i mean just as long as you're within um, 30 inches i believe of the vanity you should be good with the outlet i'll look up the nec code for that i believe it's three foot within the vanity area but most of the time you're using this to, you know, for a blow dryer or whatever. So you're going to want it somewhere convenient. So we'll just make this at the, like the top of our vanity here. Uh, we'll make it 32 inches to the top. And I'm going to have to get some kind of framing here in order for me to mount my box. So let's go ahead and do that. It's about 32 to the top of this. And we are going to be having some half inch plywood to buff this out. So we're going to hold this box out a little bit. Eight inches on the other side of the toilet. So the toilet tank will be probably right around here. So honestly, if you wanted to put a, a bidet seat on here, you'd have an outlet to be able to plug that into too. Yeah, so it'll be down below the vanity. 
as you become uh, popular. Yeah, it'll be great to be able to plug <laughs> putting a lot in more outlets in that way, days. and it's kind of hidden. I kind of like that idea. I always you want that to be really the like bottom left, having right. outlets kind of oh, floating okay. around. Plus, we want to have some shelving, so no one really wants to look at an outlet. Everybody's complaining about the outlets. I want to see them. Okay, so yeah, so what you're getting a lot of requests for the bidet, uh, heated seats and whatnot, I guess. <laughs> we, we are. I mean, uh, for some reason, it's getting real popular these days. And, it, and it's always an afterthought. It's after the bathroom is done. They're like, oh, you know what? We wanted to get this fancy toilet. Can we get an outlet put in here? And it's always a second floor bathroom. So well, it can be done. It's just difficult. So what, what's the role on that? I mean, it is heat, right? I mean, um, it does. they do have a heated... Um, you know, see yeah, mechanism. Yeah. So when it comes to stuff like that, it's all about the manufacturer specification and it is also an outlet in the bathroom. So it should be part of the bathroom outlet circuit. Okay. So, so like, and as we were talking about earlier with the, uh, being able to share your outlet circuit with the switch circuit, I decided to look that up real quick. Just wanted to verify because you always got to check the code book every <laughs> once in a while. And, Right there it is. You can share it. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Good. So, yeah. All right. So, so if you wanted a bidet toilet seat and you're the, you know, the toilet's on the other side of the room, I mean, you, you could just go off of your existing GFI. Outlet yeah. I would, it, unless you were sharing it with a lot of the other bathrooms, like you, you always want to check when, it, so, so whenever you're putting in a, a general uh, bathroom outlet circuit, you're putting that in under the assumption that this is just for general use. So if you have an appliance that you're choosing for something, it's always best to just run a new circuit for that appliance, uh, especially if it calls it out in the in the uh, in the installation manual. If it says that it requires a dedicated circuit, I would always uh, go to the the uh, the installation manual, the appliance that you're buying just to double check. If it's something that's a, a low consumption, um, if it's going to be like below um, 11 amps something in that area which would be i think about a thousand watts maybe a little less than that um then you can share that off of off of your gfi outlet circuit i mean i would share it anyway if well, it was okay so speaking of which i was going to get into that because the heated flooring system um you know obviously i ran a 20 amp over to that mm -hmm. and uh you know looking at my heated system here i kind of highlighted it here so this is just a 30 square foot mat 124 uh, 120 volt 360 watts, three amps. Uh, yeah. So it's really not much, right? It's not much. Uh, uh, you know, that that's another one. Usually heating systems, they want you to have a dedicated circuit uh, just just because it's a constant draw of power and it can cause like heat in your, in your wiring going all the way back to the panel, like just cause some general heating on the wires themselves. Right. And that's why typically when you're doing inductive heating like that, they want you to gauge up like use a larger gauge than you're supposed to just to prevent any kind of heating in the wires it's something that's using that small amount of power it is ridiculous but again i'd always divert to just the installation manual and the manufacturer specifications on the way that they want that installed and if they call for a dedicated circuit that's kind of what you need to do because that's how it's tested okay okay yeah um so with this question in that same phase you know it, it's gonna this has always confused me and i guess i'm not a hundred percent sure, uh, you know, when it comes to Watts and amps. So, you know, obviously the amp is the, the big idea for the size wire you need. Does the mm -hmm. wattage have any configuration with that or what, what exactly is it? So it depends on your volts. So you got your Watts volts and then your amps, and those are all part of an equation. You want to divide your wattage by your voltage and that's going to give you your amperage or you multiply your amperage oh. times your voltage and you get your wattage. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So, um, so the, the, the total Watts, what that just, they're just giving me an extra piece of information. I don't necessarily need on this then. They're not specifying your, they're not specifying your voltage, uh, or do they have, I can't read it from here. Uh, but, well, it um, says 124, 120 volt system. So. Yeah. So you, you would just have to do an equation to get your amperage for that, to, to know what size breaker. A lot of times they'll tell you Man. the minimum size breaker that you should be using for it. Okay. Um, but in this case, so I guess in this situation, it would be that this is three. What, what, I can't read it. What that is? Uh, said three, three amps. Something. 
Oh, so they tell you the amperage. Yeah, they do sell me the amperage. Yeah, three amps, oh, so 360 watts. watts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they don't give you uh, all three of them. They'll just tell you like the wattage and the voltage, and you can figure out. You the have to figure yourself. out what your amperage needs to be. Okay. So it, with this situation, since that is a smaller mat, so say if you had several locations, several floor heat areas, you can use one circuit to power all of those different floor heaters, knowing it, as long as you don't exceed. The amperage of the wire supplying those floor heat now you wouldn't use that wire to say do a baseboard heater well i guess you could do a baseboard heater a small baseboard heater in the floor heat so that's what you would probably yeah you know use that wattage calculation for make sure you don't exceed any exceed of that, that. yeah or you, i guess i mean we're if i wanted to I, I don't know what kind of wattage those uses but there's there's ceiling fans or the vent fans with the heaters i, mean, I don't yeah they take a lot or they you... they do um they do require their own dedicated circuit and they actually do specifically say on those units in particular not to share that circuit with anything oh. else oh yeah okay. so that one in particular has to have its own okay um, okay Thank but you. uh as oh. far as like because it's 120 volt if you were able to come off of your gfi outlet like i would do i would do that floor heater with a towel warmer yeah. or or something like that i don't think i would share it with my gfi outlet i don't know the rules on that right off hand you probably could do it but i don't think you'd want to take away from your ability to use a hair dryer right in, in combination with the floor so right. best bet is always just run a dedicated circuit what i always like to do is keep it simple and yeah. try not to make it over complicated don't connect one thing to another thinking that you can get away with you know trying to just run them back to the panel if they can be combined then you can do it back there but yeah, it's right. it's better off to just keep it simple in the rooms that you're working in. Right. Try not to overcomplicate your wiring. Right, 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 right. I mean, I know a lot of people that have the second floor bath. I mean, that doesn't associate here in the basement because obviously this is the easiest run in the world. Everything's open, you can run it over mm -hmm. there. But on a second floor, a lot of people take out those jacuzzi tubs and then they use that circuit. You know, if you normally it's a dedicated to the jacuzzi, and then they can yeah. add it, use that for their the heated flooring. You know, absolutely. So, that's yeah. a, that's an excellent idea. I'm all about saving good wiring if it's good. Right. right. For sure. Yeah. You can find a good a good uh, decent place to splice that and extend it where you need to take it to. Right. It's always a good idea. Um, yeah. So I just to kind of explain in the video about using the bigger boxes. I think it just make especially, and I'm not even sure if this uh, Wi-Fi controlled switch is bulky or not but i know those dim, yeah. those dim switches are really huge um you know. yeah or and not that, dim that switches but i mean timer switch for the fan those things are pretty bulky so yeah, they yeah they are and a lot of them end up taking up a lot of space so you definitely that's another reason why you want to keep your wiring simple yeah because yeah. simple simple wiring is less wiring and it takes up less volume and gives you more options for devices like that because once you put like say if you put three of those in there along with all the wiring you have you may be exceeding <laughs> your volume at that point and the only thing you got to watch out for with fiberglass is the old work fiberglass. If you have to, ever have to cut in an old work box, those old work fiberglass boxes will not accept some of these dimmers and smart switches. Um, they don't fit. Huh. So I guess it depends on the brand. Maybe the brands that we have here in, in Pittsburgh are probably different than some other ones in the nation. But we've had a lot of trouble with those fitting and those we've had to go to plastic old work. Okay, so speaking of volume, this is something I'm, um, I guess I'm somewhat uh, unknowledgeable about the volume, the amount of wires in this box. So I got the, the power lead in, I got each separate circuit, one to the shower light, one to the fan, one to the vanity. Um, if I wanted to run another circuit, um, how many, I guess, how many circuits can I put in this box? <laughs> oh, well, it, it, it's, it's, it, so you got to figure out how to count them first. And it's not just simple, just straight up standard math. It's uh, whenever you strip all the wires. So you look in the back of the box and it'll tell you something like uh, that you can have 24 14 gauge wires in there. What they mean is you count one for the neutral, one for the black, which is your hot. And, and that's going to be two. Now the grounds, you take all the grounds together and that is considered one. So you only count one for all the grounds combined and then one for each individual wire. And then there's allotment for each type of device you use. Now, a standard single pull switch is going to be a 0.5, I believe. Don't quote me on that. It's either a 0.5 or a 1. And then the the smart devices go up to a uh, 1.5 for oh, uh, for, really? for a wire uh, volume allowance, you could say. Okay. Uh, so 
So that would take away from this. When you look in the back of that box, you'll see the number 24, 24, 14 gauge. I don't have a box on me. I can't remember exactly what they are. But so you could uh, have six, six units for three smart switches in there. Like that's going to take up. Or four that would take up 4.5. 4.5. 4. 4. 5. 4. 5. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to, if you had six, six or five separate wires in there, I guess that would be. Yeah. 10, 10. I'm glad I brought my code book for this because I got to be very specific. 14. Be on there. Five. Okay. I can tell you what the volume allowance is for a single pull switch. That stuff can be Googled. That's pretty easy. You don't need a code book for that. Yeah. Just need to know know the know the question to ask. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah, because I mean, one of the things like I, I always, you know, I, <laughs> I always find the bigger boxes obviously to be a lot easier. But when it comes to the GFIs, especially in older bathrooms, like that's where you know when I always recommend these old bathrooms is to gut everything, take everything down to the studs, change out those old boxes. Um, you know, and most likely the, the wiring is usually bad. So you sometimes you have to at least run a new GFI outlet because everything's connected to something goofy. But trying to get a GFI in one of those old metal boxes, I mean, my goodness, it's just, especially if you have it feeding another something else. Oh, you, yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, you, it just doesn't feel right. I mean, you're really. No, <laughs> you're just... it's not. And it's not good because the thing is, is that say if you use that outlet for, for a lot, like say you're blow drying your hair for a good 20 30 minutes yeah well when you're doing that you're you're consuming a lot of electricity and those wires will get a little bit warm and that little bit of warmness isn't a big deal but if those wires are smashed up against the metal box and that jacket starts getting a little bit more flexible that's when you're going to end up getting a short in your box right which you know it does its job does what it's supposed to do kicks the breaker everything's safe it's all fine but you may have destroyed your wire and you're gonna to have to get an electrician to come in there and fix it change it all out yeah, right yeah so the plastic boxes are just better better in a, in a lot of different ways i mean the metal boxes are more rigid so you're guaranteed for it to keep its shape and stay kind of like where it's at but the plastic box well the metal boxes don't strip out as much um right but the screws do snap off in them too so it's just yeah, you know. to, to catch twenty two on them yeah it's, and that's yeah. that's the one thing i found with the even the uh fiberglass boxes like you know, I like them. I like the rigidity of them. They definitely hold in better, especially uh, they don't, you know, they don't come on level very easily because they're, they're well intact. But I do hear a lot of people having problems of them stripping out in the screws, which can be pretty mm -hmm. painful too. So, oh, that's ridiculous because then you got to rip, rip the box out and start over. There's no right. fixing that. Right. Yeah. That's the unfortunate thing about it that there is no fixing that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There is another brand of box that I like <clears throat> that's a gray box that has a uh, uses a piece of metal to catch the thread. But this type of box is special in the way that when you put the device in, you don't have to screw it in. You merely push the screws and it goes straight in and it's hmm. tight. Really? You don't have to use. Yeah, you don't have to use a screwdriver. You just push them and they go straight <laughs> in. You give it a little bit of a, t a twist and it, it tightens it up. Yeah, interesting. interesting. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. They don't. I don't know how much they strip sometimes, but not, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's a weird box. Yeah. People were coming out with all kinds of stuff all the time. Yeah. Which reminds me that that box setup you did in the wall there with the two by four, there's a much easier ways to do that, to, to get your box where you want it. That that's going to be a lot easier for you. They sell this uh, metal bracket that spans across the Yeah. Right there. Oh Yeah. They have a metal bracket that spans across the two by fours and it holds the box wherever you want it. You can position it anywhere on that bracket and fasten it in between those two two by fours. Okay. It's a lot easier than, than doing all that framing for a, for an outlet. Yeah. I'll yeah, have they, to look they, into that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and on an outside, stuff. outside wall, I mean, that kind of hurts your R value right there too. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, yeah. It certainly does. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so it would, yeah. The metal bracket would be kind of good for everybody on that one. Okay. Yep. I'll definitely look at it, especially with the, the plumbing there and everything that would be a lot easier having something just shoot across. There. Yeah. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're remodeling a bathroom yourself and you're, you're taking your time, you know, just all the more reason to buy the better products to make your life a little bit easier, have the whole job come out easier. Right. You know, it's a, it costs you like a box like that. That'll have the mounted bracket on. It might cost you $2 more, but it looks like it would save you probably 30, 40 minutes of work. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, right. It'd be worth it. Right. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, moving on to the next part here. Um, and 
we got that's also part of the reason why you hire an electrician because <laughs> we know all the best products that's right yeah you know, you're absolutely yeah. right you're absolutely right <laughs> yep. um so you can do it yourself but should you <laughs> yeah no there's no doubt there's it's a learning there's definitely a lot involved and especially with like you know some of that old you know, some of it, uh, I really regret touching it myself. So it's a can of worms. Every time it's a can of worms. And, and, and I'm always the bearer of bad news to customers to tell them that, look, unfortunately, this is the best time to start rewiring your house because it's not going to get any better. Right. You know, <laughs> right. If you start ripping open your house like this and you find that yeah. maybe your job just expanded from the bathroom to the rest of the house. Yeah. And that that is one of the painful things about being a bathroom contractor is... Mm -hmm. You know, people are are almost stretched with what the cost of the actual bathroom costs. I mean, these days yes. the average bathroom now, which it's it's hard for me to believe, but it's it is what it is, is around twenty thousand dollars, and that's basic yeah. end stuff. Like that's not like the fancy crate, you know, the, the heated flooring and stuff. That would be additional in a lot of circumstances when you're ripping out an existing bathroom, I should say. Um, you know, adding on a new one like down here. I mean, this is still going to be you know, relatively close to 25 grand with uh, the plumbing and everything that had to be done here. But in a normal bathroom circumstance, uh, 20 grand is, is usually about the minimum these days. And then yeah. when you open up the walls like that and you find all this stuff and then, then you got to- Well, dump, that's the thing, you know. you know, you're the contractor, that's the primary thought. I am not even really the secondary thought. They didn't think about me. Yeah. You know, I'm the, I'm the one who has to come in after you're already overextended and tell you that you got to rewire your house at this point because- you know, if you don't, then, right. you know, we can fix what's here. You can keep going with what you have. Right. But if you want to be, you know, efficient with your money, right. this would be the time to do it when you have access to other. When you have access to bathroom. Pay. Right. The bathroom is always centrally located. And yep. when you rip them open, you have access to this bedroom, that bedroom, yep. ceiling in the hallway, a lot of different things. Right. Yeah. You got the so, waste stack to run everything up next to and have that. bring everything yep. to everything. Right. Yep. Yeah. That last last bathroom that I just did turned into sixty percent rewire of the house. Oh wow! Yeah, and they didn't weren't expecting that at all. They just wanted to get a new bathroom. Well, and that's the one thing I do. I really do feel bad for some of the people that buy these older homes, nineteen forties, fifties homes, and you know they get a home inspector coming in there. The home inspector doesn't open up everything. They they're, they're not going to. You know, they're just they're gonna yeah. uh, visually see what they can um write something about the report and then you know when the bathroom starts leaking because the copper pipes went bad or the cast iron went bad they want the bathroom re-renovated and then they find out that all of their wiring is just not right mm -hmm. um along with the plumbing you know the plumbing was the reason that i was called in there but then the wiring becomes even a, a more additional thing and then you come it's you it's, know, it's, it's a terrible it's thing and, and people just really have no idea what they might be getting into with these nope. old homes i mean um, and then the, you know, you know, lately with the way the real estate prices keep going up, it's just like, you think you're getting a really, um, quality thing. And then, you know, you're just not sure when, when you're going to have a major issue like that. And that's, it's a hell of a, hell of a cost thing to have to take care of. Yeah. You know, well, it's, it's hard to know everything in these, these home inspectors it, you know, it's hard to, it's all in, in who you end up getting. Some are good, some are bad. But uh, they can't know everything about my field, just like right. they can't know everything about the plumber's field as well. Like they look at electric, they see an outlet, it functions, says that it's grounded. They think this is great. You know, this outlet's fine. There's nothing wrong with this outlet. I look at it and I say, well, that thing was installed in 1935. And uh, you're about one heavy load away from just burning out the whole circuit and needing half your house rewired. <laughs> oh, <geez. It's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. He sees it different, you know? <laughs> All right, we're going to get into our next part, just this shower light. This was only a few minute um, video here. And uh, I love these lights, first off, I got to say. So I'll show you here. Okay, so we just have a couple more wires to run. One for the light fixture above the shower. See where this is going to fall we need to be 17 and a half inches for a center and we're 15 so that works out well so we're just going to keep this wire loose up here and we'll grab it when we go to 
cut out the cement board. leave we'll figure out where we need to locate that but we'll look, get a staple on there screw or anything so you don't really have to you can let them be a little loose in here it's probably better off right, so one of my favorite lights that I pretty much put in every one of my bathrooms are these halo lights. So these are like, you basically can run that wire up here, cut in your ceiling afterwards, and then connect your box and wire everything together. So much easier than those regular can lights that you used to have. So it's just a little spring-loaded clamp that holds it into place, but it's nice four inch. And what's really great about them is that you can change the flavor of light. So if you like it like a real yellow, warm look, you could bring it all the way down to 2700K, and if you wanted it to be a nice, uh, well, I don't even know if it's really nice, but like a cool light, uh, really bright, you can make it 5000K. But having the ability to adjust it to match the rest of your lighting is pretty awesome. So all you gotta do is cut a four inch hole. Obviously multiple ways of going about doing that, but I'm just gonna use a hole saw. And so let's get our center. So we got 24 and a quarter. Well, actually, we're just gonna make it 24 on this side because we got a half inch drywall or half inch buffer board that we're doing here. So we're gonna get 24 and then 17 and a half is the center. It's basically gonna where our drain's gonna be down below. So something like that. And what's great about this is that I have a joist like right here. So you could even overlap some of that joist pretty easily. Uh, because it is just simply these little spring clamps that are holding it in together. So you could even be like halfway on that joist and still be able to get this in okay. So that's one nice feature. You don't always have to rely, you know, on your framing to dictate things for the most part. So all that I do is cut a four and an eighth inch hole. So I'm gonna grab my wire that I brought up there. These are just a little push in Romex connector. They have just little pushing connectors that make it really easy. So just take like three quarters of an inch off of your sheathing and just plug them in. Neutral in the neutral, ground in the ground. But I'm, I'm gonna set it on the highest setting, but we can change this out later on, but I'm just doing that for camera work. So you just tuck this back in here. I'm gonna be taking this down, obviously, when I go to do the, the tile. He's shaking as well. his head. He's shaking his head. <laughs> so, but it's real easy to pop in and out with these spring clamps. So there's our light, and we'll get some power in here so we have a light coming down inside of our shower. So I see you're shaking your head. You're shaking your head. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining all the people that like to call out the little tiny uh, nitpick things about code. Yeah. So, you know, of course, everyone's everyone's going to say you're supposed to mount that junction box because right. it's supposed to be a mounted junction box to give you holes to mount the thing with. I have never met an inspector in my life that gives two whatevers <laughs> about whether or not these boxes are mounted to a joist because no one ever does it. It can be done, sure. You can put a big, long extension on your screwdriver and run that thing into a joist, but what's that really doing for anybody? It, it yeah. doesn't, you know. Yeah. I shouldn't say that it doesn't matter. It is a code violation, <laughs> <laughs> but most people don't care. Yeah. The only other thing is, like, that, that I'd say someone would pick out is, is the stapling. It does actually specifically state in the code book that your wires should be flat on the two by four yeah, when they're stapled, okay, they can't okay. be sitting like this, which okay. everybody does that as long as you keep it loose and you make sure that they're not, you know, abused, it's fine, but yeah. they don't ever want a staple impacting a wire in that direction. They want that, you know, they want it to be able to sit flat over the neutral and, and hot at the same time, I not gotcha. sitting against two hots, okay. you know, okay. Cause it, sometimes you get these, these rookies pounding staples and they drive them home. And that can cause a problem with the circuit. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it'll, eventually, if that circuit, like, and it may not become a problem right away, it could be somewhere down the line after that circuit gets kind of warm after being used a lot. Like, say, if it's your floor heat circuit or if it's your GFI outlet circuit and it gets a little warm, that jacket can loosen up. And at that point, it can it can become a short. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's kind of why I was mentioning. I mean, I, I never staple it, you know, to the point where you're actually pinching anything. It's always, I'm always right. able to move and That's your best right? policy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's your best policy. But as the code states, and an inspector could jam you up on that for not having your wires flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. All right. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. but yeah. And honestly, I, I almost always do do it that way. I'm not sure exactly why I did it this way on this one. I don't I don't know. But um, yeah, that's good to know. I'll definitely remember. I'm just looking at this through inspector's <laughs> eyes, that's all. <laughs> but yeah, no, how about those lights, though? I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, compared to those old six-inch... They're they're Rabbit good they're chains. good i mean i i love them i i just think they're so much easier i every time i put one in it's like man i'm so glad i don't have to deal with those old big bulky boxes you know? well there is, there is only one downside is that it, yeah it's you don't have to deal with all that but the homeowner is going to have to deal with changing that out someday when it True. burns out right and that that's where you're going to actually have to hire an electrician to change your light right you know, well, yeah, and then how often are you coming across that? I mean, you do a lot of new construction, mm -hmm. and you're trimming them out, and I see that in just the regular even dome lights. They're all like they're completely yeah, hardwired in. in. So if that if yeah. the light goes out, you got to pitch the whole thing and buy a whole new <laughs> a whole new unit. It's the world we live in. That's crazy. <laughs> it uh, is crazy. I, I try to use as much trims and bulbs as possible. Uh, just for my customers to make sure it's easier for them to change their lights out. We do use wafers quite often. Okay. Um, it, it's, you know, it just for the convenience and the look and things like that. Um, but I, I try to steer. I mean, I know a lot of people do like those lights. And the great thing about them, they're wet location rated. You know, they're outdoor rated. They're IC rated. Yeah. Uh, which is really nice because if you want to use a four inch, they do not make a four inch old work recessed light that is IC rated. So if you wanted to go four inch in your attic level, it would have to be Newark or a wafer light like that. But like I said, the downside is, is that if it burns out, right. you know, and it's not the transformer and it's, if it's the transformer, not the bulb, then you're actually rewiring the fixture. Well, and even those, um, oh, they don't, they, you're saying they don't sell a retrofit uh, can? Or? Not in four inch, uh, not a four inch IC rated that oh, I. Oh, IC rated. Know. Yeah, right. Okay. IC yeah, rated. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because I was going to say, even those retrofit ones that I've used that were smaller like that, they were really horrible to work with, too, yep. you know. So, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, I don't really do steam showers. It's been, a, I mean, I've done one, I think, in my career. Uh, but I, I don't I would, think those aren't steam showers. I, I don't think they would be either. But in a residential setting, I wouldn't even question it. Um you know, but yeah, no, they they wouldn't be considered steam rated, but uh, I mean, they're a completely Wet location sealed. rated. They're yeah, they're right. rated to be in a shower. Right, 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 right. It's not a steam shower. Right, but uh, yeah. So, yeah. um, all right. So I I also get questions and and about vent fan location. Mm -hmm. Uh, can that be in the shower? Yes. Uh, well, you, you, it, uh, Again, that's another one you go. You want to go to manufacturer specifications. Some manufacturers say they cannot be located in the shower. Other ones say can be re located directly in the shower. Most of the time where you're going to see that is going to be a recessed vent light uh, combo where it's an actual recessed light with a ventilation combination on it. Those I, I know for sure are definitely um, shower rated to be directly in the shower. Uh, okay. Some of the other, some of the other cheaper models, I, I don't believe, are necessarily uh, rated to be directly in the shower, unless your shower is over six foot tall. They have um, uh, the codes on on how what would be considered inside the shower. Yeah, I believe that would be a low six foot. I think it is. Okay. I think if you have an eight foot ceiling, it doesn't matter if it's uh, rate. It can be just a wet location rated because. Oh. Because okay. anything in the shower in the bathroom area is going to be wet location rated, so. So you need to, yeah. So it's specified off of the fixture that you're going to buy, then. Yeah, the yeah. Usually it's product done. specification. When okay. It comes to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. No, I've I've always just kind of avoided. I just have never thought that that was um, a good idea. Now, obviously, um, we're just we're talking. You know, you're talking about code that's adopted in this area. There's mm -hmm. other places that are much more 
uh, ludicrous when it comes to, um, you know, well, like on. when it comes to that, um, like a lot of times it, you know, the, the, the product manufacturer will make something for a certain purpose and have it sent to UL to have it strenuously tested in those circumstances. So uh, a lot of times, uh, a lot of your rules really just come down to the product itself. Yeah. So uh, I would always recommend just reading the, the product specs okay. on anything that you're going to get. If you plan on getting it, you want to put it inside your shower, just look it up and see if it says that it's rated to do that. For a it should say it clearly right on the box. It's located to be put directly in shower. Okay. okay. A lot of times the inspectors actually want you to keep that information because if you do put it in a shower, that's more of a, a tighter. Uh, sometimes they frame the ceiling down. It's a little bit closer to you. They want to see that label that says like in shower rated okay okay yeah. okay because they'll make that with a galvanized metal that's not going to rust away super fast yeah 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 i've seen yeah i've seen that a lot with the uh some of the can lights are just completely rusted away or exactly or yeah. around the trim kits are just uh yeah terrible. they weren't designed for it yeah right right it's right. crazy how specific things can get but yeah yeah okay all right so the next part i know you'll enjoy or uh <laughs> You're gonna oh, laugh geez. at it. Yeah, I know. You probably already saw a little bit of this on some of my. Uh, yeah, I watch. I saw a couple clips here and there. Yeah. On the web, but so this is something that I did not uh, necessarily prep my client for or think about until I went to actually run these wires. I just yeah. it's, it's such a small house. I honestly didn't assume that there would be <laughs> this much stuff in there. Uh, well, and I want to say, I honestly didn't panel. even look at it. Yeah, you could. <laughs> that's a small of a panel. That's a 20 circuit mini. <laughs> that, that's a, that's called a, te, a, a 1020. Well, you'll see my reaction to this is somewhat. I was like, is this a sub panel? Where, where the heck is the main, like. Uh, Typically, that's what those are used for. Yeah, it's it was definitely kind of goofy. Um, well, back in the day, whenever they put that in, that panel cost $35. <laughs> is that right? Wow. And that's why they put it in. Okay. okay. Yeah, GE had a special on those. They were selling them like hotcakes. Wow. And they just yeah. used us for this whole house. I mean, this house is very small. It's literally two bedroom. Um, but yeah, I mean, over the years, they got air conditioning. Um, yeah. You know, they got the dryer in here. You know, so there's like all these things that are at. And then, I mean, wait. Yeah. I mean, wait until you see the inside of this thing. Uh, so. Wiring houses was a much easier career back then. Yeah, a lot, a lot more simple. Yeah, not having any um, air conditioner units. That's probably be has to be another one that you see a lot of scary situations. Uh, people having air conditioning window units just plugged in and various. Yeah, locations. abusing those circuits. Yeah, right. Because it was never like, ever just. I mean, 1940s or whatever. They never even that was never a consideration. Yeah, well, my favorite is the the uh, outlet splitter with the air conditioner on the end of that with all the tv and everything else plugged in. <laughs> yeah you got to have your yeah right you got to have the game yeah. console plugged in along with it so yeah all right then make sure that, so this is this will be a good reaction video on this one because it's definitely bad this is going to be our main box here that we got to get our yeah, wires into. plenty of those it's 100 amp yeah there's the main breaker so they must have the the main service cable coming in from the back somehow Ooh. Yeah, right there. This is the main supply from your meter. I've never really seen it come in that way. It's kind of odd. That's it looks so tiny. a custom hole. It's such a small box. Well, they didn't require much back then, I guess. So we got two 20 they amps. required more than that. So one for the GFI, <laughs> one for the heated floor of 20 amp. And then this is our lighting circuit. So let's find a spot to bring them in at. Excuse Don't even waste one your time. <laughs> Don't waste your time. <laughs> You're just going to be pulling those back out. I would have stopped right before that and said, okay. <laughs> We're going to have to replace this panel. We're going to go any further. I was determined. I, I, I thought I was going to be able to make it work. At all. Oh, there ain't much room in this panel. Holy cow. Uh, you almost bring that to code. Why? You can't share any of the neutral lugs. Look at them all jammed. <laughs> You'd have to add a very neutral box. Oh, just to no pull that in. No I mean, you could take... There's like just not enough well, buses. We have our neutral I was going to say, you could take all the grounds, pull them all out. Well, it'll work, yeah, but like you can even see some of this corrosion on all these grounds and stuff. I mean... Well, I don't know what you would do with that. You know, there's some... I don't know what's going on there, but this panel really should be replaced. It's just too small. 
Not that it's I not going to power what I needed about. to power. It's just it's already gone. With it. <laughs> there's just too much in this box. So I'm going to temporarily hook it up to get it to work, but I'm going to have to let the client know that he's going to have to get a new box. There's just no way around it. I could spend more time um, telling him why. There's no way to efficiently it put it, replace it. all of these um, items in here. It's already overpacked as it is now. I mean, you really don't want to have separate or have uh, your neutral and your ground in the same bus. So yep. that's definitely something, you know, a licensed electrician is going to have to turn off the power out the main house and then, and then replace this. But for right now, I'm just going to connect this so that we at least have power in there. Yep. So this is something that you should look at as a contractor that's considering doing adding on a basement bathroom, make sure that they have enough hmm. ability yeah, here good. because this is something that, you know, it's going to cost the client a couple of thousand dollars to change out now. It's making more violations. This, you know, it could be kind of an argument point that you didn't warn them that this was going to have to be done. This is my 15 minute line for my lighting. That's mainly what I'm concerned about having. I don't need the outlet and I definitely don't need the the heated flooring double oh you see that <laughs> i got two 15 amps into this breaker and being the fact that you did not use I got two into this one to do your lights that lighting circuit at and that point this i thought that these would clip in but they don't i'll make those in minutes. so that's not so really extra great. space there so at that that point, there actually is no more room in this box well, and that's what with every have to be done sooner time you later. replace a outlet or a light yeah, fixture there switch. definitely isn't enough room here. technically required to upgrade that circuit to combination arc fault, which is a full size breaker. So okay. that's the primary reason why that panel would never work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and we'll get into here shortly, but uh, I actually didn't realize that that there was an additional bus on the, um, the power supply to even clip that thing in. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. You have to actually take a look at that. Cause I, I wasn't able to clip that breaker in. There wasn't anything, there wasn't really? any, yeah, like it, on the actual uh, power supply. Uh, well, that's so. So they would they would give you a certain number of breakers that can go into that panel. They would tell you this is a probably like a twelve twenty would be my guess is what they what they were saying it is, uh, or actually no, it'd be a ten eighteen, and they would have a couple of those spaces would be for full size breakers only, and the rest of them would be for the mini breakers. Which snap in completely differently than the oh, full size. Oh, they use a totally different spot that they could snap into. Okay. So it's probably meant to keep you from overloading <laughs> that panel. Yep. It's very easy to overload. Now, a panel like that is only going to be used for very specific, like very small, very like two bedroom houses, yeah. um, like eight hundred square foot. Well, that's what this thousand. is. That's what this is. I just they brought they just brought a ton of extra. Lines yeah, he's got in. too much going I on. I mean, there. They, they, you know, in the basement, they just they have like five different circuits they brought in there, and it really didn't need to be in the panel either. So, I mean, yeah, you know. So, if if a person, if I had a customer who was desperate to keep that panel, it didn't appear to have too many major code violations. Like, if they didn't have any corrosion or bad rust, and they needed to keep it, what I would suggest is to junction down some of the circuits that aren't as useful right so say if you have like a lot of different lights all on a couple different circuits junction those into one and you got to put those in a wire nut first and then bring a one wire out to go into your breaker right. and you want to do the same thing with the neutrals as well to keep everything contained right and so that it just has one lead out to those buses now as far as your neutral and uh, ground bus you can have the neutrals and grounds on the same bus when it's a main breaker panel that is allowed but the neutrals each neutral has to have its own lug. It cannot share a hole with any other wire. It has to have its own. Yeah. So okay. that's where this panel becomes a problem because there's not enough space nope. between the ground wires and the neutrals to fit into that. So right. you'd actually have to put in an auxiliary, an additional bus below it, connect it right. with a large gauge neutral wire to you know allow that electricity. And at that point, I mean, my goodness. It's just not working. <laughs> It, it would be so full you would have to be like a heart surgeon to fit all that in there i yeah. mean it's yeah. it's crazy yeah. so it'd be easier to just swap out the panel and the problem is with swapping out the panel is that you really shouldn't be using the old entrance cable when you change out the panel so you probably should change yeah. out the entrance yeah. cable at that point you need to change the meter socket yeah. at that point 
Yep. You're just changing the whole service. Yep. So, yep. 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 but um, yep. it would be the best thing to do in that right. situation. Well, let me finish this off real quick, uh, and we'll discuss a little bit more about what's in here. So, yeah, and they got like I said, they got they got bra- they got double wires and and breakers. This is just all bad. All right, all right, we're done. We're done for now, I guess. So, all right, scratch that. I mean, at least it's a basement bathroom. It's not like it's affecting the rest of the house. Like, it's not like you need this. All right, so we got temporary power, at least for the light. This is my heated flooring. Leave that out of there. Get my brother in here, change this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so yeah, you definitely need, I definitely need help here. <laughs> yeah, and you're supposed to seal off your panel at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, okay. Everybody knows when there's kids <laughs> playing around, they all go for the live panels. Try sticking their fingers in there. So you're saying yeah. there, there's a lot of violations in this little short video, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. yeah, that panel is definitely... They were never good to begin with. Right. Yeah. I never liked them. Those, those little breakers, they do function. The breakers work all right, you know, but... Yeah, so, w- just... so what does cause all this corrosion on the on this ground? Is it just moisture? Yes. Okay. So it's just strictly moisture. Um, yeah. Right. So whenever you have anytime there's electricity flowing and there's moisture present, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna create corrosion because it, it the electricity creates a, a uh, uh, what do they call that a uh, pH imbalance in the water. Okay. And that pH imbalance will start inducing corrosion in the material. Yeah, because I got a closer image of that. Um... So yeah, there was double breakers or double wires. And yeah, double tap. And, yeah, double yep. tap on there. Um, which I'm guessing. Yeah, they don't like that because like if you tighten it up, you think you got it tight, but it's like one wire is tight and the other one's just kind of sitting in there. And when you do that and you're on a standard breaker like that, it can generate a lot of heat. Yeah. Enough heat to actually melt the jacket off of that wire, and then you end up having a bare wire in your panel that could arc into something and start, you know, throwing sparks and causing problems. And they had another one over here as well. But yeah, this is the corrosion I was talking about. I mean, it was just, you know, not all of them were like this, but there was a couple that were almost, they felt pretty, pretty flimsy. Yeah. So, right. So that would, that that's a ground wire right there. And that, that would suggest that there's probably some electricity going through that ground wire if it's getting corroded like that. I mean, it could just be sitting against something else that already started corroding, like the wall of the panel is right. usually where the corrosion starts. But, uh, if electricity travels through a bare ground wire sitting saturated with water, it, and it'll eventually, if the water is sitting there, it'll eventually cause a pH imbalance and start corroding. Okay. Just like a battery. Yep, yep, yep. Like a battery only backwards. Right, right. Yep. Right. Okay. Well, that was definitely a, a surprise to me. I was not expecting this little small house to have such a mess in it. And um, so I would just uh, warn anybody who is considering yes. it, any bathroom remodel, like to do a little bit more homework and research on the existing electrical service before you uh, decide that you wanted heated flooring and all these additional items. <laughs> yeah, my, my life is uh, full of contractors calling saying, I just ripped open the wall and you won't believe what I found. Right. And you're like, you know what? I bet I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it all. I'm very sure. I've heard it all. Yes, I think. I mean, I don't know. I learn stuff, new stuff every day, so I couldn't say that. Oh, so Randy Dell's on here from Facebook. He uh, said, what a mess. <laughs> yeah. Contractor, another local contractor here from Pittsburgh. So, yeah. Uh, Boy, man, I could definitely keep going uh, on on a whole bunch more electrical stuff. It's been awesome talking to you about all these things. Um, you know, a lot of it, uh, a lot of these people get get the same questions. So I definitely love to have you on again to to highlight something. Maybe uh, we could do some kind of video on the the replacement of this panel because yeah, uh, sure. I mean, I'm, sure. it obviously has to has to be done. Um, and it, you know. Yeah, it'd be interesting to get a little bit more insight of all the different violations that are actually in this thing as well. So yeah, right when we start picking it apart. No, I mean that's that that's probably about it. I mean, actually, I, I I'd like to see the way that entrance cable is coming in through the back because my guess is there's no connector on that. Looks like just a bunch of putty. Oh jammed. yeah, right, just a whole bunch of putty now, just jammed in there. Now that that right there is extremely dangerous because if there is any shift in that panel, 
and it decided to chop into that wire, there's no breaker on that wire. It's going to continue to explode until the transformer shuts off. And then the transformer is going to turn back on and start making it explode some more. Okay, so just just for because I, I mentioned at the end this is a basement bathroom none of these things have to be hooked up right now like it could be just left the way it is but like this isn't really even safe for the house the way it's existing now no yeah that was never safe from the time it was installed <laughs> okay um yeah and, and it, it, it just takes one accident with somebody hitting that panel with something heavy enough to shift it and that thing would blow up bigger than you could believe really? i mean it would be it would be quite an explosion because it's going to be an aluminum wire against a, a steel back of that box well actually that's an aluminum box that'd be a real good explosion and there's no breaker on that right it doesn't shut off right it, it just this the transformer looks at that as a load and it's just going to keep punching power into it until it does what it thinks it's got to do and the other thing i didn't notice on here was any real ground <laughs> i did not yeah, notice I, any I like that i don't I see any uh, I don't, don't see any, any big, you know, grounding. like what, what, what gauge do you normally run on a panel like this? Uh, that would be a number six bear copper. Ground it's a big, a big here. copper wire, like a big, yeah, copper wire. into the ground. And I don't see outside. any of that in here. So, so that's completely relying on the neutral wire going back. Yeah. Which right. is, is most likely compromised because the way that it runs in through the back of that box, you want to make sure that it's going to be in a position now where it can be dry. Right. And, that that's just and if there's corrosion down there there's even more corrosion inside that entrance cable because that's when i when it comes to the um the grounds too i'm always mentioning to people because you know a lot of times when you're remodeling a bathroom you know sometimes it's just better off to just run everything new pecs you know and running pecs mm -hmm. everywhere and if you do that sometimes a lot of that was used to be connected as a ground and so if you cut that off of there you don't no longer have a ground you know to your electrical panel and, uh, and, then, and again, another what, thing that like no one's really paying attention to until they start to, to do it. And then they, really, yeah. they mess and, it up. And yeah. when something like that happens, that's usually when your house becomes haunted. <laughs> and that's that's <laughs> what I'm told when I get there, that the house is haunted, but that's the lights getting brighter and dimmer all throughout oh, the house for various reasons because you. it has no neutral, and, has nowhere for that electricity to go. It's just trying to go out through your water lines the best that it can. Oh, my. And that causes your lights to do all kinds of crazy things through your house. Okay. No. So, wow. yeah, when, that's why grounding is very, very important. I mean, that that panel is probably one of the more dangerous one I've I've seen in a while. Yeah. Kind of just you know, and just, you randomly happens to be in the bathroom that you you chose to do. So just goes to show you, yeah. there's a lot of bad electrical work being done out there. Yes, for sure. For a very long time. Yeah. 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 There's a reason. The reason, reason why you hire professionals. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Uh, yep. I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. See you. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. And again, check out my courses. That's definitely helping support me. The DIY Geek membership will have all of the courses, including what I've done to this point on this basement bathroom. And I assure you, if you're a contractor, this is definitely going to save you a lot of time, frustration, and definitely prevent you from um, being overwhelmed. Like that's the biggest thing about bathroom remodeling is being overwhelmed and uh, running out of money if you're doing it as your own homeowner. So uh, again, thanks so much for everybody joining me. Give me a like on this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.